Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. The question I'm answering today is what's in the box in regards to this highly anticipated board game, Dune Imperium from Direwolf Digital, a company mostly known for making awesome board game app implementations. This is a combination of deck builder and worker placement games set in the universe of Dune, based mainly on the Frank Hubert novels and the latest legendary movie. As in Legendary Studios, not as in the movie's legendary, though it might be by the time you watch this. So I have not played this game, I have not seen the components in this game. I'm going to be cracking this box open for the first time, and you get to watch. So here you have my copy of Dune Imperium from Direwolf. About to crack it open for the first time. <laughs> if I can get the lid to open. There we go. All right, we are starting with an oversized rule book. I am not a fan of games with rule books that make me feel like I'm dad sitting at the breakfast table trying to read the giant newspaper. I get it, I guess. You make it the size of the box. There's got to be a reason for that. So there's an introduction to Doom. We're going to flip through this quickly showing how the board's set up in various regions of the board and the game components. Looks like a pretty solid component overlay, though I would have loved to have seen the backs of some of these cards. Uh, moving on to setup. This is a pretty standard setup in a, in a modern game rulebook, including a QR code to watch Mr. Rodney Smith show you how to play the game, which I do uh, recommend checking out. Moving on to the different factions in the game, the objects of the game, how deck building works, your leaders, a lot of text, some good examples. There's some nice call-outs here. Looks like a solid board game rule book here that is surprisingly uh, shorter than I thought. We are looking at only 11 pages and we're getting into card clarifications, including some strategy tips. And then the last page is just credits. Then we have an excellent uh, icon reference here on the back. Appreciate that. Then we have, um, we can you can get a Benny Gesserit statue. We have ads for other Direwolf products. Uh, more ads for Direwolf products. Again, mix of apps and actual physical games, which they're known for. Then we have the solo and two-player game rules. Got to appreciate nowadays, especially with everything going on in the world, that any company that includes a solo play for the game, it is a good thing. I got to admit, I'm a little scared of two-player variant rules. I usually prefer games that just play two-player straight up. I do know this one uses an AI to take turns in between the two players. Then we have the board space guide. So this is a worker placement game. This is a reference sheet that lists all the spots on the board and what they do. Definitely appreciate it. We get to a very basic punch board here. Um, not a lot of stuff, not a lot to punch. So there you go, here's a pretty basic punch board. Thickness is uh, typical. Punch is extremely easy. Can't complain about that at all. Then we have the player board, which I may have to switch back to my other camera so you can see. Yep, definitely. That is not going to fit here. So here you have the board for Dune Imperium. Sorry, it's a little dark here. Let's see there. Let's get a little light on it. Uh, showing the various worker placement spots you can go to broken into the different factions that are represented. Going down the side here for the four factions and so on as well as some spots on Arrakis itself and the big battleground that you will be fighting over every round. So to show off a couple of these in uh, more detail, you have the spots you're gonna place your workers on and then what you get to the right hand side, pretty simple. Spots that have um, battle symbols on them mean that you get to add troops to battles. And here is an area where you are going to fight a battle on Arrakis at the end of every round. We've got a pretty basic cardboard insert here, mainly obviously created to ship the game in one shape. This looks like it's probably gonna be not so great for holding the components once everything's punched. Let's take a look at what you get for those components. So we start off with your agents in the four different player colors. I said it's a worker placement game. Here are your workers. You're gonna start with two of them at the beginning of the game with the ability to hire a third partway through. Some wooden tracking discs. I'm not going to bother pulling these out. Pretty simple for tracking things like your hit point, or sorry, your, your victory points. Then we have some resource cubes. We have two different, sorry, not resource cubes, uh, warrior cubes. 
These are the cubes you are going to fight with in the player colors. These represent your troops on Arrakis. We've got green and blue in one bag, and over here should be another bag with red and yellow. These are your standard board game wooden cubes. And then we have the Spice Melange. Here is what everyone is fighting over in this game. If you've read the Dune books, you know exactly what this is about. If you haven't, all you need to know is this is the most valuable resource in the game because it's required for space travel and it only grows on one planet. Arrakis, known as Dune. Dune is a desert planet, which makes this resource extremely important. These are water tokens. And along with that, so a water token, which looks like a water droplet, we also have the Mentat token in here. The Mentat, without getting into details of why they exist or the background, is a character you can hire once per turn that gives you an additional worker, but it's only for that turn, and then someone else can hire them next turn. I guess I do dig this little side view of a Mentat. Then we have, I think it's Solaris. I may be wrong on this, but the currency in the game, the money. Uh, you have small and large ones. Large ones are count as five. I'm not going to bother pulling these out. These are gray circles. Then over here, we have an extra baggie. I'm not sure why one extra baggie. And the characters you can play. Now, this is something I do like that I think is very well done. So... When you break this out the right way, um, you can play different members of the family. So you can play Paul Atreides, the, I don't want to say hero, the, the main character of the novels. Or you can play Duplito Atreides, his father. Paul is easier to play with less difficult strategies, so it's a one dot. Whereas Leto is more difficult, which is three dots. Whereas if you want to play the Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, that is a three dot. So it is strongly recommended that you start with a one dot. So if you really like the Harkonnen, instead, you can play the Beast Raban, who's only a one dot Harkonnen. And we have other characters that go all the way from one to three dots, including the Richie's family and the Thorvald family. And we have little tiny cards. These are for the, these are the conflict cards. You're going to make a conflict deck at the start of the game out of these. I'm using 10 total split over three decks. These tell you what the battle on Dune is for, with this one being the top reward, is a victory point. The player in second gets some water, and the player in third gets spice. And these, of course, are all different. Then we have intrigue cards, because if you read Dune or know the story, lots and lots of political intrigue, so these are the cards to represent those, which include things like an allied armada, pay two... Uh, spice to add a whole bunch to your combat total for that turn, and so on. There are different types. There are plots, like gain two resources for buying things with charisma. Master Tactician, which you can add three to your combat strength that turn, or retreat your two troops if you think you're going to lose. So these are various decks that come in the cards. We have a whole bunch of intrigue cards, as well as the sets. And then we've got full-size cards. I do apologize for the mistake there. I thought all of the full side, all of those were full side cards. All right, a significant stack of full side cards because this is a deck building game. These are going to have mostly the same back till we get down to here. So House Hegel is for the solo and two player rule. So all these cards are actions the opponent, like the 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 AI takes. So it's what they do, how they do it and a bunch of rules for that. So this is for solo and two-player modes of play only. And the rest of these are your cards you're going to build your decks with. Just this significant stack, including starter cards and cards you're going to purchase while playing. I don't know if these are broken up in any way. Here we go. So we have the blue cards. These are the ones that are always available. These spots on the side are going to tell you which action spots you're allowed to use with this card. This is what resource it generates, and you're going to have to pick how you use your cards. So there are a whole bunch of these because it's all one card, right? You have the Arrakis Liaison, which is one card you can buy. There is the Spice Must Flow, which anyone's played Dominion is similar to that. When you purchase this card for nine influence, you get a victory point. When it comes up in your deck, though, it's worth one Spice. Then we have Fold Space, which is how you travel in space using the spice. Fold Space is a very powerful card because it lets you use any onboard spot and lets you trash this card. So if you use it, it's gone. 
So it lets you go anywhere, but it's a one-time use. This is a set of starter cards that every player will start with, including two convincing arguments, which generate the resource used to buy more cards, two daggers, which give you combat strength in your battle for Arrakis, diplomacy, which gives you one to purchase, Dune, the desert planet, which also gives you one, reconnaissance, which gives you one, and seek allies, but it can only be used once you trash it in the signet ring. What the signet ring lets you do is use each character's unique ability, including this one that says when you take a high council seat, level up with one of the, the different factions in the game. Now, these cards are also used to take spots on the board, so you'll notice convincing argument cannot be used to do anything on the board, whereas a dagger will let you activate a green spot. Diplomacy lets you activate four different types of spot. The dune lets you activate the yellow spots, which are on dune. Um, reconnaissance lets you activate a blue spot. Seek Allies lets you activate four different spots, and the Signet Ring lets you activate three different types of spots. Now, along with all these, you have those cards for all four characters, which gets me to... Those are the other starter decks. So the rest of this, right here, you can kind of see how thick that deck is, is your market of cards to buy for this deck builder. We're going to quickly just kind of flip through these. There's also multiples, different cards. i got to say, appreciate the card artwork. But ignoring the card artwork, look how clear everything is on these cards. The iconography is very clear. There's not a lot of reading required. Here's the most I've seen so far. It's really clear to see which icons are here. The cost to buy the cards clear. And the various things it does in the phases of the game are here. Really appreciate the design on these cards. Let's show off a few more. Artwork is solid. It's not the best I've seen, but it's not the worst. From what I understand, it is based on the new movie, which I have not seen. There you go. And included with this were two cards I'm just going to toss that just told you that we had the English edition that was obviously used by the production company. We're just putting everything back wherever it fits. I use this to separate the two card decks. Yeah, this box insert is not a great one for a card game. And I, except for the fact they were probably trying to use a standard board game box, I don't see a good reason for it to have been the size it is. Except again, I think they're trying to fit that um, standard board game box size. Dune Imperium from Legendary and Dire Wolf Studios. There you have it. What you get in the box for Dune Imperium. A mashup of deck building and worker placement games set in Frank Hebert's Dune's universe, uh, based also on the new Legendary Films version of Dune. This looks fantastic. I am really looking forward to getting this to the table. Component quality was decent. There was nothing I could see to complain about, though it's been a long time where I played a game where the resources were just cubes and discs. It's a, it's a little unique. I'm more used to shaped parts. Now, I do think there's a deluxe edition of this game out there, but I'll let you find that on your own. The copy I own is this one, though, and this had wooden components, which look functional. I love the card design on this. It looks very useful, and I am looking forward to the difficult decision on whether to use my cards to buy new cards or use them to place workers out on the board. That's it for my look at Dune Empyrean. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Find me all over the internet and social media as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. You can also visit my website at tabletopbellhop.com, and I invite you to listen to the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast on your podcatcher of choice. That's it for this unboxing. Thank you very much for joining me. Good night, and game on.